everyone. My name is Dr. Brian Thatcher, and welcome to Mercy Unbound. It's a series that aims to provide hope, an avenue for healing, and one that will help you understand and then live the great mercy of God. With me today, I have Kendra Tierney. She's a uh, wife, mother of 10 children. She lives outside the Los Angeles area, and uh, she started blogging in 2013, called it Catholic All Year, because she loves to celebrate the liturgical year in her home and family with her children and husband. And I thought that was really fascinating because, you know, when we really take our faith seriously, you realize these beautiful seasons of the year and they can always help you draw closer to God and um, get to know the saints better and the Blessed Mother. Her website is at catholicallyear.com. It's the same address to get to her blog. She loves to blog and uh, some interesting topics she mentioned to me, parenting, pregnancy, they have an old uh, home. She was just telling me it's built in 1920. Uh, you can see in the background there, she, that's her chapel. And I was commenting on the beautiful wood. And uh, I can only imagine how beautiful the house is. But she says they have a lot of work to do yet. But um, she loves to blog about homeschooling, curriculum choices, books, Netflix, whatever, Catholic Netflix. And uh, today I asked her to come on to just share with us about her work her love of the faith and the liturgical seasons and how she helps bring the Catholic faith into her own family year round. So Kendra, thank you for joining me today on Mercy Unbound. And uh, let's just start out, just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your family, and um, how all this got started, really. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so like you said, I, I have a big family. We've got 10 kids. Um, and I, I think that like a lot of people, my kids have been a big motivation for me to, to gain a deeper understanding of the Catholic faith so, so that I can pass it on to my kids. Um, I was raised Catholic and so was my husband, but without a lot of the... Um, or really any of the um, sort of traditional practices of the church. So my, you know, we, we had our sacraments, uh, we went to mass on Sundays, but you know, I wasn't familiar with the saints. I wasn't familiar with the rosary. Uh, I certainly didn't, you know, know about feast days beyond Christmas and Easter. Um, so when my oldest who is still at, at 20 is still a guy who asked a lot of questions, but when he was, you know, three and four, he, he had so many questions and it really was an inspiration for me to, to learn more about the faith so that I could answer those questions. And my husband and I, you know, we really wanted to teach our kids how to handle the, you know, challenging parts of our faith. So we wanted to incorporate Lent and have that mean something. We wanted to learn about fasting and abstinence days. We wanted them to be able to sit quietly in mass and be able to successfully get through the rosary. Um, and those are still goals of ours. And those are still, you know, good things that, that we prioritize. But as I was looking into, you know, wh what does this stuff mean? How do I accomplish these things? What I learned is that that's only part of, of our faith. And that there was this whole other part of these joyful celebrations and these sort of hilariously macabre patron saints of different things um, and these community celebrations that have been observed for thousands of years in the Catholic Church that I knew nothing about. And I was just really drawn to, to those as a way to celebrate and learn about, about the church and to present my kids that true sort of balanced picture of the faith that yes, we have fasting, but we also have feasting days that I didn't even know about. And, um, you know, and, and to get to know these saints as friends, to, to learn about the history of the church and the life of Jesus and the Holy Family. And it's all there in the, on the liturgical calendar. You know, it's interesting your comment on the saints, because I, I had some conversation online recently with the Protestant gal, and she really had no problem with asking people to pray for her on earth, but she didn't understand our Catholic concept of the communion of saints and how we're all one big family. And it, isn't that the truth? You know, as you get to know the saints, you, you understand they were human too. And we're not 
neglecting Jesus when they ask them to pray for us any more than when we ask our best friend to pray for us if we're struggling. We're all one big family, aren't we? Absolutely. <clears throat> and uh, one of the things that was most striking to me as I sort of started delving into these saints' lives um, to be able to share them with my kids um, was how different the saints are from one another and and how you know you can you can find saints that seem so similar to my temperament and then ones that are so different and it really it, it helps you realize that there's no one way to get to heaven there's no one way to be a saint um and, and that there are you know there are saints that we can commiserate with and there are saints that we can you know aspire to be more like and uh, it, it's just, I think it's such a wonderful resource for, for kids and grownups to, you know, to read about the lives of the saints and, um, and, and just, you know, get that, that inspiration to, to live our lives more like they did. You know, it's so true because uh, we have the saints and I bet for everybody that's going to watch this show, if they have a particular problem, there's a saint that had the same problem. And they weren't born, you know, heroic saints without work. I One of my sons, uh, my youngest boy is an avid athlete, works out, is in great physical shape. And I tell him, you know, that's the same athleticism you got by working hard, but the spiritual development takes some work too. You know, it just doesn't come. And virtues, you have to work at them and try and get rid of your vices. And uh, yeah, there is support from the saints, isn't there? Because they were like us. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, this concept of patron saints, because there are patron saints of the, you know, the city where you live, the country where you live, your profession, and also, of course, you know, your, your name that, that so many of us mindfully gave our, our children names that are, uh, that, uh, you know, are shared by a saint and are we making sure that they also know those saints? It, you know, that, that that's not a like check the box. Now we've we've asked the saint to be a friend and intercessor for, for our child. And we wanna make sure that, that our kids know them. I always, uh, uh, you know, my kids love the, you know, Marvel superheroes and the Disney princesses. And I think that's fine. That's the culture that we live in. And, 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 is, and you know, with, with supervision and, and some discernment, we've been able to enjoy cultural entertainment. But I would be very remiss, I think, if my kids could name all of the Marvel superheroes and could name all of the Disney princesses and couldn't name more than that in, uh, you know, of the communion of saints that, that it's the same, you know, I want them to have toys of the saints and books about the saints and pictures of the saints so that that is part of their, you know, part of their circle also. Um, and we, there are so many more wonderful resources for kids of, you know, toys and books and things than there were when my old, you know, for my two-year-old than there were for my 20-year-old. It was a bit of a desert of, uh, of Catholic stuff for kids uh, 20 years ago. It was uh, kind of low quality stuff, but there are some really great artists and small businesses and, and big businesses putting out great, um, great saint stuff for kids now. So now we have that option to, for their playroom and their bookshelf to include, uh, you know, the, the saints as friends as well. Now, I mentioned your website. I want to say it again, Catholic allyear.com and i think we set up but tell us again what really is the mission and how do you accomplish that mission yeah so it it kind of started i i told you you know that sort of inspiration of wanting to be able to to teach my kids and i was you know listening to podcasts and i was reading books and a couple of books i came across were these old um you know 1950s and 1960s liturgical living in the home books one of which is written by maria von trap it's called around the year with the trap family and another one um uh is the year in our children by mary reed newland and they just presented sort of this this beautiful uh picture of living the liturgical year living these seasons and days in a family 
And yet it seemed really, really overwhelming. It didn't seem like something that was accomplishable by me as a young mom with a lot of kids and, uh, and, and not a lot of homemaking skills. <laughs> and, um, and so my goal, as I learned how to do this for our family, my goal was, you know, how can I help other people to be able to observe these days and seasons, use these, th this, this sort of framework that the church has given us as a way to try out different devotions, remember to do different prayers, think about different saints and different aspects of, of Jesus and Mary. How can I help people have an easier time starting it than I did? Um, and so, you know, it started off as just blog posts. Hey, here's how we celebrate this. Here's how we celebrate that. Um, and then it eventually became a, a book and then a couple of books. Um, so I have the Catholic All Year Compendium. So show us that one now, again that they can, one they can get and this it website. covers about a hundred different feast days during the year ha gives a little bit of a backstory um behind the saint or the history of the feast day and what we do in our home to celebrate it gives some suggestions for bible readings for particular prayers or novenas or litanies kids love litanies um <laughs> and you know just ways to celebrate them in the home Kendra, let me uh, and, it, Kendra. Um, they can get these at your website, catholicallyear.com. Yes, and also from Ignatius Press, uh, from Amazon. Uh, but I do, I have um, signature copies on my website if you're into that sort of thing. And then, yeah, they're also, they're in bookshops and, um, and yeah, wherever books are sold. Let me, let me go back to the beginning. Maybe a question I should have asked. I think most of our listeners or viewers will know, but let's start at the beginning. Explain to us what liturgical seasons are. What what does the word even mean? Yeah, right. So we, you know, we know there's winter, uh, spring, summer, fall, but the church also has liturgical seasons. And even if you're not, you know, aware of it uh, at the front of your mind, you'll you'll have noticed the differences in the mass uh, and differences in the decorating uh, in the church when you when you attend mass. So there's Advent. Christmas, we've got a little ordinary time after Christmas, then Lent, Easter, and the long section of ordinary time where we are now. And the those liturgical seasons um, really sort of govern how the mass is celebrated, how the church is decorated, different hymns that, uh, you know, that are traditionally associated with those seasons. Uh, and and of course, there are different feast days that fall within the with within those seasons. Um, and liturgical living in the home is just that idea of let's let's bring those the those seasons and the character of those seasons home with us, so that it's not just something that happens on Sunday. So Advent is a season of preparation. It's, it's not Christmas yet. It's a season of preparing for Christmas. And then, of course, we have the joyful season of Christmas. Lent is this season of not only preparation, but also penance uh, to prepare us for the joy of Easter. And, and that it, it creates this beautiful cycle that we see in the church, but that has also been so beneficial for, for my family to be observing in our home that same sort of feeling of the cycle of the, you know, the weather and the seasons. And the, just also this, here's a time to focus on, on, on penance. And, but then there are also times to focus on, on joy and celebration. And it just creates this beautiful rhythm and, uh, you know, and these beautiful opportunities for conversation in and the home. In our own lives, it's a, a it's a life of seasons you know we have joyful times we have sorrowful times we have grieving times and um can you hold up that book again if you would and give us the title and and i think you were going to mention a couple other things as well yeah so this is a catholic all year compendium and then it's uh sister book is is this one called the catholic all year prayer companion so they can be used you know they're, they're intended to be used together but also fun can function separately and the prayer companion is, I mentioned that in the compendium, I have recommendations for here's a, you know, here's the Bible verse that's associated with this, you know, historic feast day, or here's prayers that are associated with this particular saint, 
Um, here are, you know, thing, novenas and things that are, that are associated with different seasons and different feast days. And the text of all of those is in the prayer companions. You don't have to look those up. And we just keep the, the prayer companion, we just keep right on our, um, on the counter in our dining room. And, and that way my husband can just grab it and uh, lead our, lead our family in prayer in the, uh, in the evening on these, on all these different feast days with zero planning on his part. <laughs> What's, what's your favorite liturgical season and, uh, or, or even some of your children? Uh, share with us your experiences. Yeah, so I think that, you know, the, I, I really think my favorite is Advent, even though the point of Advent is to prepare for Christmas. And even though the most important season is Easter, I really love the, the season of Advent is very rich with liturgical living traditions. And I think that that's the season that, that if you have been accidentally liturgically living at home, that, that that's the season where you probably have traditions associated with it. Things like the Advent wreath um, are liturgical living in the home traditions. Um, and it, you know things that you do every year to prepare your home, to prepare your family, to celebrate Christmas, those are liturgical living traditions, even if you haven't been thinking about it like that. Um, we, we always do a nine day novena before that ends on Christmas Eve. And it's been such a beautiful way to really seat that season as preparation and not yet Christmas. Uh, and you know, the, we come together with the kids, it just takes you know maybe 15 minutes and we all sit around uh, on those last nine days before Christmas, and we pray this this novena that I think was composed in this like 1723 or something. I just love so so many people have said it all over the world and for for uh, you know so so many years. Um, and and I think that it really it helps us to to remember. All right, you know here's here's what we're preparing for. Here's why. And, uh, and then when it's done, then it's really feels like Christmas. You know, in our home, uh, all of our children are out of the home except one, but uh, I, for many, 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 many years, you know, the, we had the calendar, Advent calendar and getting ready for Christmas. The, exactly, the candles, yeah. And I remember the pink candle and the kids would light the candles and things. So you have that perspective and then you've got so many Catholics that, you know, go to mass on Sunday and then don't think about what they do during the rest of the week and um, it, it really is uh, the faith is a seven uh, day a, a, a week job so to speak and it's not just one hour a, a week right and absolutely and you know I, I was definitely the same way and I think that we just have as a church kind of gotten out of the habit of encouraging these some of these uh, observances and celebrations and I think that that in some ways it was done, you know, for good reasons, for ecumenical reasons, for, um, but I think that it, it sort of feels like it was a failed experiment and, and things are coming back. Like I never saw a Eucharistic procession for the Feast of Corpus Christi my whole life until the last two years. Um, and our, our parish has one now, and I'm hearing from people all over, all over the country saying, yeah, we've never had a Eucharistic procession, but we, you know, but we had one this year and things like that. Uh, ours has to be in the church. We're still, we're still lobbying the city of Pasadena to allow us to be out in the streets. But I mean, what a beautiful witness to what Catholics believe about the Eucharist. I mean, what a beautiful witness to go out in the streets and just walk around and show everybody what we think about the Eucharist. Um, so things like that, I mean, those are, that's our cultural heritage. Those are real Catholic traditions that were celebrated for hundreds and thousands of years. And it seems like after, you know, a little bit of a break, we're getting back to those, um, to our roots. We're getting back to those traditions that can really show the world the truth and beauty and joy of the Catholic faith. You know, this uh, last weekend, I was in Plymouth, Michigan uh, for the Feast of Corpus Christi, and uh, they were having a, a Eucharistic procession on, on the feast day. And uh, 
while you were speaking, it reminded me of back in 1997. So we're talking 25 years ago, I was in Santarém, Portugal for the 750th anniversary of the Eucharistic miracle of Santarém. And they had an outdoor procession through the town and they had leaves and flowers, roses strewn on the streets. And, you know, if you imagine a typical uh, Portuguese apartment with the people coming out in their uh, upper floors uh, waving and uh, waving flags and things, it was just really awesome. And um, yeah, the church has uh, been doing this for a long time. And uh, yeah, that's it's it's amazing, and and again, it's it's a it's an opportunity for for evangelization. You know, um, people are gonna wonder what's up with that. They might look into it. <laughs> how how has this helped your children? Do you think? Yeah, I think it, I I think that th there's actually a beautiful. Um, encyclical that I include part of in the Catholic All Year Prayer Companion that was, I'm going to forget which Pope it was, Pius somebody, um, who instituted the uh, Feast of Christ the King. And it, uh, the encyclical is called Quas Primas. And he talks about in this encyclical that he wants to institute this Feast of Christ the King. And he explains that the reason that he wants to institute this feast day is because if he, you know, writes a treatise on, on Christ the King, it will reach a learned few and they're just going to read it once. But if he institutes a feast day, then it will reach the people in a celebratory way, you know, through their, through their stomachs and through their uh, minds, and it will happen again and again every year. And it was so great to come across this, this encyclical from the 1920-ish, um, and realize, yes, that is exactly the experience that we have had in our family of celebrating feast days. That even when it's silly things like, you know, having a having a bonfire for the uh, for the eve of the Nativity of Saint John the Baptist, which is a very ancient tradition, and eat, and getting edible crickets and eating those with the kids, which is very memorable and funny and fun. But what it does is, you know, it, it makes those feast days and those saints part of the, you know, recurring traditions and part of the lives of my kids. And it starts conversations. And that's really what liturgical living in the home, you know, the beauty of that has been. We sit down to dinner. I've made a meal that, you know, because I have to cook dinner anyway, if I plan ahead a little bit, I make a meal that's associated with that saint or the country that they're from, or just a silly food pun like St. Thomas s'mores. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and what it does is it just facilitates conversation. So we talk about that saint and I will, you know, ideally I will have looked it up a little bit beforehand. Um, and, and we talk about these these um you know points of catholic doctrine we talk about why saint john the baptist gets a feast day for his birthday and not his death day, and not just his death day like like other saints we talk about corpus christi and and we talk about the eucharist and we talk about the real presence and it just facilitates conversation and so what that means is that all these different prayers and novenas and patron saints and points of doctrine are just little tools that my kids get to gather and put in their toolbox. And they have that understanding, they have those knowledge, that knowledge, they have those resources that they can pull from the rest of their lives. And that's really, that's the goal, right? For to, that, that we and our, and our loved ones end up in heaven. And the best way to do that is to be baptized Catholic and understand our Catholic faith and live and die in it. And and as silly as it sounds, I think that having waffles on the Feast of the Annunciation and visiting a cemetery on, uh, on All Souls Day, those are the types of things that can, that can make our faith meaningful and worth fighting for and, and worth sacrificing for. And I really have seen that in, you know, in my own kids. Uh, my, uh, my oldest is 20, my youngest is two. So, you know, I'm not done yet. <laughs> But it has been it, it has been a really beautiful, um, you know, way to focus our home life. 
you know, I was thinking while you were speaking, even if the viewer would Google what saint's feast day is on their birthday, you know, just to learn a little bit about, more about that. Um, I was born February 22nd. That's the feast of the chair of St. Peter. But uh, I remember looking at a saint's book. I have a big collection of books and Margaret of Cortona. And uh, she lived in the Middle Ages and uh, got pregnant with her lover, who was a prince, and uh, had an illegitimate child. And sometime after that, her, uh, the prince got killed in the forest, uh, knocked off from his horse, must have hit his head. And she had such remorse and worried about his soul that she had a total conversion of her life and lived a very heroic life after that. And I thought, no, that's a fascinating story that I wouldn't have, you know, that piqued my interest. Yeah, no, I, I love St. Margaret of Cortona. I suggest her to a lot of people as like, here's an, uh, here's an unwed mother who, who is a saint and that, that these are the people that the church gives us as, uh, you know, as this inspiration that no matter what your circumstances, there's a way to, you know, to become a saint. And it's so great, I think, for kids to grow up with that understanding that it's not just, um, you know, not everybody in heaven lived a quiet and perfect life, that it was a, it was a bumpy road for a lot of them. <clears throat> and, 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 you know, so there's, well, there's always hope. Um, yeah, my birthday is on the Feast of the Korean Martyrs, which, you know, I, so I have just like you looked into and learned about them. And that's definitely probably not something, I, you know, I, I would have looked into otherwise, but just amazing stories, amazing stories. And so sometimes uh, we go out for Korean barbecue for my birthday. <laughs> you know, in that same tone, it, it, people watching or listening to the show need to remember it's not where you've been, it's where you're going. And um, God is such a merciful God, um, but you have to repent, you have to change your life. Um, but there's hope because look at the past. If you don't know the past, you know, you're kind of living in darkness in a way. And um, is, is your husband involved in the ministry? He's not really uh, involved in Catholic all year, except, um, <laughs> except I can often rope him into being in our, uh, in, in my liturgical living videos on the, uh, on our, on my YouTube channel. But um, he, he uh, has a podcast called the dad project that he does. It's a, um, it, it's a, you know, about, about parenting. It's more from a secular perspective, but with deep Catholic roots. Um, but the, yeah, so that definitely, uh, people should people, check that out. It's how really could good. people find that? Yeah. It's just, if you, if you just search for the dad project, it's all in all of the major, um, podcasting platforms. Um, but yeah, he's definitely, um, an, an active participant in our, in our liturgical living in the home, which is, which is such a blessing. And I know not, you know, not all families, um, have, have that, uh, uh, you know, going in their homes. And, um, but I do think that, that even for dads who are just trying to sort of get started as the faith leader of their homes, this is, this ha it is really an easy way to do this, that all you have to do, you know, you sit down, you, you just introduce this saint, say a little prayer, um, and, and be able to, you know, allow your kids to see that, that your life, you know, see you as, as a man of prayer, see you as, as a faith leader in the home, because especially, uh, you know, the, the kids see, I think they're, you know, they see their moms. When I go to daily mass, I take the kids with me. When I get up early to try to say a rosary, my kids find me, you know, they, they, you know, we say the, we, we do as part of our homeschool day, you know, we do catechism together. We, uh, say prayers together. So my kids really see that in, um, you know, from their mom, but their, you know, for, for most of their lives, their dad was out of the house for, um, you know, almost all day. And even though he's a daily communicant, even though he listens to religious podcasts and says the rosary, they don't necessarily see that. Um, so those, those moments in the evening around the dinner table, when he can be involved in those conversations and, um, and, and be that, you know, faith leader in our home, I think is really, I think is really important. And it's also, you know, statistically been proven to be really important, uh, right. in families. So I, um, 
I think that that this framework is great because I, I know for busy dads, you just think, <clears throat> sorry, I don't have time to plan a curriculum, you know, to, to teach my kids. That's why I send them to Catholic school, but they need to see it from you. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be as easy as, hey, here's a little extra prayer. Um, and, you know, what do we think about that? And it's just, you know, that conversation. Do the kids ever come up with anything or give you any ideas for projects or? Oh, they absolutely do. One of my daughters, a, uh, my almost 13 year old daughter is, um, uh, 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 she is great at, at making associations with, with different, you know, desserts or something that she, that she might like us to have. She can always figure out a way to tie it to the feast day. Um, but, but something that I really love um, in, in uh, you know, observing the liturgical year in the home with a big family is the way that, you know, these feast days come around again and the kids are able to experience it differently and understand it differently at different ages. And the older kids really can sort of take ownership of helping the littler kids understand and know these things. I, I had a couple of pregnancies where I was really sick and, and my older kids stepped up and because you probably, you know, remember you do something once in a family and the kids are like, that is an unbreakable tradition. We have to do it every year now. Um, but, but they're great. I, I mean, I think that the most important thing we have is a wall calendar on the wall that has the feast days. And so they can see what feast days are coming up and they absolutely remind me, hey, don't we have this food on this feast day? Hey, don't you need to go to the store to get that? Um, because, and that's, you know, it's just hanging in the kitchen. And that I think is really step one, just have a calendar. They give them out for free during Advent at, at, uh, in churches usually, but yeah, the, the kids really are, really are involved. And I think it's been, it, 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 it's one of my favorite things about it is seeing the the older kids helping the younger ones. Yeah, that's awesome. Of all the things you've written or uh, have available, what what is your favorite? What would you say? Well, I would be remiss if I didn't show off our, we have a, um, for like a year and a half now, we've had this liturgical living subscription box. And so it was one of the, you know, one of the things people say to me is this all sounds great, I'm convinced, I don't know how to put this stuff together at home. So we have these boxes and this is the one that, uh, that we're, we just put out for July. <clears throat> so it's the next upcoming one and you just get it in the mail and it's three feast days. It's got craft projects, art for the wall. Um, sometimes there's like a little snack or food in there. This one has, uh, so the feast of uh, of Saint Mary Magdalene is in July, and there's a tradition about Mary Magdalene and the red egg. Um, and so we have uh, oh, an egg dye kit to dye eggs red and do an egg tapping game. And there's also craft eggs that you can decorate. There's a um, there's a project for making your own scapular. Uh, like this one. So it's real wool scapular, with little crucifix, and you can sew it together. So it's just little ways. <clears throat> there's a, and there's the ingredients to make a uh, maple taffy that, uh, that St. Kateri may have uh, enjoyed uh, in her lifetime because it's a traditional recipe from, in, uh, from uh, Northeastern indigenous peoples. So it's just a, I like to think that it's sort of training wheels, that if you're wondering like, all right, I wanna do some of this stuff. I wanna do activities and, and recipes and things associated with the liturgical year, but I don't know how to get started. We will send you three feast days, <laughs> three feast days a month. Um, and my kids just really love, um, love getting the box and getting to do the projects. Walk me through here the logistics of that. So they go to your website, catholicallyear.com, and what are they looking at? What are they looking yeah, for? Yeah, so it's just um, in the shop. I think it's one of the uh, pull-down menus. It says the you know box shop, and, and, and it talks about, and then there's a landing page that explains the whole thing about the subscription boxes. 
We also have a membership that allows access to a whole um, library of, of digital and print resources, recipes, calendars, um, printable activities. Um, there is a, there's a lot of stuff available there. Um, there's a lot of free resources on the website. Um, it really is my goal to empower people to try this as a lifestyle. Um, and, and it really is that, that, you know, you can dip your toes in for a little bit, but you know, what, when, when it really gets going, it, it becomes a way of living in your home. Um, and, 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 you know, for me, it just, it, it's just sort of this natural way that we, that we go from, from week to week in our home. So for those subscribing to that, do they get a box every month? They get a box every month with three feast days every month. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That's really wonderful. You know, we're all struggling, whether we're spiritual, religious, or whatever. And uh, what words of encouragement could you give to Catholic families out there? Uh, you've got a large family and your own struggles, but. Yeah, I think, you know, what I hear from people is is worry that they're worried that they'll somehow mess it up or though they're worried that they didn't start early enough um they're and, and i think that that as catholics that's not that's not our outlook right that we we shouldn't we shouldn't be worried we have hope and so you know like we were talking about with with all the different saints and and their inspiration that what we know is that it's never too late. And the, the best thing we can do for ourselves and our families, no matter what we have or haven't done in the past is to give, you know, just start trying now. And so if, if your kid's faith formation hasn't been something that you've been able to prioritize in the past, then now is a great time to start. And, and you can start small with just introducing a few you know, just a, a family rosary or celebrating the, uh, you know, celebrating your kid's baptism day and, and their name day, adding those celebrations to birthday goes so far in the home to, you know, to sort of practice what you preach. Because if we believe what we say we believe about baptism, well, that's a more important day to be celebrating than your birthday. So, you know, just add that as well and get to know your kid's patron saints and, get some good books in your house, just, you know, take little steps to, to, to change things. And, um, you know, and, and it, it's never too late. It's, it's always, always a good time to start or improve on, on what you've been doing. Any thoughts that you want to share with us? Of course, as Eucharistic apostles, we talked about the Eucharist. We spread the message of divine mercy as a way of life. Um, any thoughts on helping families out there with the message of divine mercy or yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it ties into, you know, to what we were just talking about that, that our, our kids should know that merciful love of Jesus and our kids should be confident in that, that not as, you know, that we don't, um, that, that, that we want our kids to grow up seeing confession as a gift, seeing, um, you know, that seeing Jesus's love is something that we always have recourse to. Um, and, there are, there are beautiful liturgical traditions associated with divine mercy, the, the, you know, the beautiful uh, divine mercy Sunday and that indulgence, which is so simple to get, it requires very little effort. And it's such a beautiful opportunity, um, you know, to, to gain a, a plenary indulgence uh, on, on divine mercy Sunday. There's the beautiful um, <clears throat> divine mercy novena leaning up to it and the divine mercy chaplet that can really be a beautiful part of a plan of life. I love the, I love tying daily prayer to times on the clock because it really, you know, you can put an alarm on your phone and, and it really, uh, you know, so if your little alarm goes off at, at three o'clock, you can do a divine mercy chaplet in like what, eight minutes. So quick. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that, that's, um, it's a, there are so many great truths traditions associated with it that can help our kids really be familiar with this concept of divine mercy. <clears throat> you blog also, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, how often do you blog and share just a couple of maybe what you're yeah, doing? I, 
it, it varies a lot, um, uh, but I, I do try to have a, a new blog post up every you know week or two. The most recent one that uh, I would I would definitely um, encourage people to check out is is what we're calling what I'm calling the ultimate Catholic summer challenge, and it's just 25 um, Catholic things to try to accomplish over the summer. One of them was go to a Eucharistic procession, so you have to substitute something for that, but things like, you know, make s'mores, like I mentioned for uh, the Feast of St. Thomas More, or have a bonfire, go to the beach for St. Thomas, uh, sorry, for uh, St. Augustine, uh, and then go to confession, say a family rosary, um, you know, all, all of these things, and, you know, you can just check them off, and at the end of the summer, you will have, you know, given liturgical living in the home a real go. Kendra, hold up your books again, if you would, and give the titles. And of course, they can get them at your website. Yes. So Catholic All Year Compendium, Catholic All Year Prayer Companion. We also have, you know, wall calendars. We've got a meal planner. We've got um, all sorts of, of free and not free resources. So, yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> I'd encourage all the viewers to uh, get those books, support Kendra. I was just thinking, laughing to myself uh, with with the large family, the uh, grocery bill is quite extensive. And yeah, uh, we got a big van. They got a 12 passenger van. We got to put gas in, yeah, in we, California. <laughs> when our kids were growing up, uh, we had a, a 12 passenger van. It was known as the Thatcher mobile. And uh, the kids used to put their heads down because they were so embarrassed by it. But now we laugh about it. But um, any closing thoughts you want to share with us uh, on uh, all your work and Efforts. Well, no, uh, just just that um, just that it's been such a blessing in in our family and and such a, a just such a nice clean uh, template for for how to introduce all these different things to kids, which can feel so overwhelming. And so I just hope my goal is that people won't be as overwhelmed as I was when I first learned about this concept, and and that they would you know feel empowered to give it a try. Well, Kendra, I want to thank you so much for joining me today on Mercy Unbound. People, go to Kendra's website, catholicallyear.com. There's some tremendous materials there. I've looked at the website. It's quite exhaustive. Um, she's doing incredible work and um, helping young families build up the faith. So keep it up, Kendra. People, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, subscribe and share it with friends. Let's get the word out of materials that are available to help uh, live and learn the faith and the love of Jesus Christ. And Thank you again, Kendra, for joining me today on Mercy Unbound. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the video portion. The podcast can be heard at anchor.fm slash drbryan, B-R-Y-A-N, Thatcher, T-H-A-T-C-H-E-R, and on all the major podcast forums. I would love to speak at your church or conference, and please consider supporting our efforts to spread the truth to a hurting world. Thank you again. And for more information, go to the website at drbryanthatcher.com.